What's up, you guys? Welcome back to another episode of Bogan Every Podcast, where we talk about anything and everything from faith, finance, and fitness to things that life throws at us. And guys, before I introduce our next guest, I would just ask if you could subscribe if you're on YouTube. If you're on Spotify, be sure to give us a follow and a rating. That would help out tremendously with the algorithm. And if you're on Apple Podcasts, we ask for the same thing there. All subscriptions, all follows, all that jazz um, will help out tremendously. Um, and follow us on Instagram too, at Bogan Every Podcast. And with that said, I would like to introduce our next guest. Um, he is someone who's a, a mortgage loan officer. He is someone who's very big on entrepreneurship and just financial freedom in general. Ladies and gentlemen, Courtney Douglas. Courtney, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. Oh, no problem. How's it going, guys? Appreciate you, man. So, Courtney, something I want to ask you that I ask all my guests is what is something you would say to your 18-year-old self? Um, Honestly, if I was to go back to my 18-year-old self, I would be highly, highly, highly focused on having a plan. Um, and, you know, for me, I kind of, kind of winged it for a little bit. You know, I, I graduated high school, went to college, you know, I played football. That's kind of how I got to college. And I didn't really have like a, like a plan of what I wanted to do with my life, how I wanted to set it out, where I wanted to be at certain, you know, levels, um, until honestly, like my junior, senior year. So I would say have a plan and, and stick to that plan. Now, let's get into that a little bit. Give us context of, of like your upbringing, kind of like your childhood um, and all that stuff. Yeah, so I'm born and raised in Coral Springs, Florida. Uh, my parents are both from Jamaica, um, immigrants from Jamaica. Um, they they work their ass off to, you know, give me a, a life well-being. Um, you know, I played sports my whole life. Anything, you name it, soccer, basketball, football, um, and football is kind of the one that stuck. Um, I played football in high school all four years. I was a captain for two years, went on to play in college for four years. Um, and that's kind of, kind of how it went on my upbringing. <laughs> and, you know, how did that lead to initially, you know, going into mortgages? Were you just wondering one day what to do, you know, during college or did it come from maybe your parents? Like how, how did that draw you towards mortgage business specifically? Yeah, so both of my parents are real estate investors. Um, they own, you know, some property in Florida. Um, so obviously, you know, I just thought real estate was kind of what everyone did at a certain age. So, you know, I've that's like I, I, you know, in my upbringing, I've you know managed properties, and I didn't even know that that was property managing. You know, just going out. You know, if, you know, if a renter needed something, if I needed to, you know, fix something, that that's kind of, you know, what I did. So, you know, getting into the mortgage industry, um, I would say was a was a blessing um, in disguise, and it was kind of kind of a freak thing. Um, and why I say that is, I was just scrolling, um, you know, looking for jobs at the time. I, I just graduated my junior. Well, I was a junior getting ready to go on my senior year. And I, I was like, what, what am I going to do? Um, I'm not big on, you know, working and not being able to maximize my income. Right. So I needed something, you know, similar to sales, which in a sense, being in the mortgage industry, you're, you're in sales. Um, and also something that I can build a platform and, and have it grow. So my first ever, you know, real job was sales. Um, you know, I worked at at t business to business. Um, I used to, you know, door knock business owners and try to switch them over from Comcast to AT&T. Um, and I realized I was really good at certain things like that. Um, you know, at a very young age, I was top of my group. I went on to, you know, right before I left and I was doing this all while I was in college on my little small breaks, um, winter break. So I realized I was really good at talking to people, um, developing relationships. So, um, and then, and, and then mortgages and as far as real estate kind of correlated with that, right? Uh, very good numbers and as well as building relationships, like I said, but also these last, you know, couple of years, we had a very good real estate market. Um, so I kind of used that to, you know, you know, take my door in and kind of, kind of really ran with it in a sense. Man, I love that. And so can you explain as well a little bit on the business structure with you specifically for mortgages? Like, you know, does that, you know, obviously when you sell a house as a real, est real estate agent, as an instance, uh, you get a commission, you get a fee, right? And so you being a mortgage uh, loan officer, what does that look like do you, to you? Do you get like a percentage off the money that's being loaned? Like what's the structure behind that specifically? Yeah, so the structure is, is kind of similar to a real estate agent. 
Um, but a real estate agent gets paid based on the sales price. So let's just say someone buys a $500,000 house, a realtor can make anywhere from two to 3% of that, right? If you're making anything lower, um, that's, that's not really good, right? Now, if you're a loan officer, you get paid off for the loan amount, right? So let's just say someone buys a $500,000 house, like I said in reference, and they're putting 50,000 down, I would get paid a percentage off of 450, right? So as a lender, you can get paid anywhere. I mean, we call it off of BIPs, meaning basis points. So that's in a sense, just percentage points. Um, so you can get paid as a you know a lender anywhere from flat file, meaning every loan you close, you may make $500 all the way up to, you know, 0.25%, all the way up to, you know, 2.75%. So that's kind of how the structure you get paid. Every company, every lender is different. Every broker is different. Every direct lender is different. But there's different pay structures, um, and it depends on what you're doing. Um, I'm self-sourced. Sorry, I got my dog in the background. But I'm self-sourced, so, you know, I'm primarily percentage-based. Um, but there's a lot of companies and a lot of people I know that got in the mortgage industry that get paid flat file. So they're, you know, whether they're in a the call center pounding phones, um, they may get paid 500 bucks per loan that they close, or similar to me, to where I get paid a percentage. In my opinion, the percentage side is the, you know, the best side to scale your business. Uh, because at, you know, a flat profile, you're kind of stuck in that race to where you got to just get as much people as possible. Um, you kind of just working with anyone and everyone. Um, so, you know, there's different sides of it. You know, similar to a realtor, they have a broker that they, they submit to, you know, in a sense of like their quote unquote boss is the same metrics applied towards someone who's in the mortgage or can someone who just got into mortgage, you know, do their own thing? Yeah. So. I'm going to kind of backtrack that question and correlate it to what you just asked. So I started in the mortgage industry as an assistant, meaning I did all the dirty work. Uh, I'm talking about my branch manager would get a file. I would go ahead and break down that file, meaning run their income, run their credit, um, everything involved and kind of get it prepped up, ready for a review um, for my branch manager, which is a loan officer. Um, and then there's different tiers, you know, as far as in, you know, being a loan officer, even in the mortgage industry. Now, can you just repeat your question again? I just want to make sure I answer it right. Yeah. So a real estate agent, they have like a broker, right? Do you also have a broker initially or, or can you be your own boss? Yeah. So you're, you're always your own boss, but you do have a branch manager. So a branch manager, in a sense, is just like a broker. Um, they're pretty much the person that, you know, owns the shop. Um, but everyone, you know, every loan officer is their own boss in a way. Um, you eat what you kill. Um, you know, you have to self sort your business. You're not having people feed you leads or anything like that unless you're working with a company that does. Um, and my company has the opportunity to have my own team. So, you know, that's that's a huge plus. Um, you know, any any business you're looking to scale, you need people around you. Um, so I hope that answers your question. Yeah, for sure. And for anyone who's looking into doing that potentially, whether straight out of high school or someone even during college or whatever the case may be, you know, what steps can they take to basically, you know, run towards that? Yeah. So to fast track your process, I would highly recommend getting licensed as soon as possible. Um, you have to take a, you know, learning course, it's 40 hours, um, you know, in South Florida, they have this place called Gold Coast, similar to a real estate agent. You go there and then you kind of study for the test, take it, you pass, and then you're a licensed loan officer, right? Now, you know, getting hired, I would say the last two years was pretty easy um, because, you know, mortgages were flying out of the sky. I mean, you walk into Walmart and there's someone you can, you know, refinance their home. Um, nowadays, it's a little bit harder to get started up, I would say, because, you know, for a lot of lenders, you know, if they were highly, highly refinanced shops, their business is down, right? I'm purchase focused. So my business, you know, is still growing. Um, but I would say an easy way to get in is get with someone, meaning go out, find local mortgage companies or brokers, um, interview with them, you know, get with people that are similar to what you're looking to do um, with your career. Um, and see if, you know, they'll hire you for free as a, as an assistant. That's kind of what I did. 
Um, and I don't regret it because the knowledge that I gained in such a short time is, you know, was the reason to how I kind of scale my business. Now you can go get licensed and do all that and go ahead and, you know, go work at a company. You really won't have any support. You don't really know what you're doing. And as far as your trajectory, in my opinion, is going to be, you know, flat footed there. Man, that's awesome. And so let me ask you this on the more personal scale. What are some failures that you've learned through this process, through some closings, through some success that you've experienced? I'm sure you've had a lot of failures to a certain degree. Yeah. So, you know, starting out, you don't know anything. Um, I've screwed up a lot of times. A lot of times we're almost alone, you know, possibly didn't close because of me. Um, but you, you have to do that starting out. You know, there's failure between I didn't even know how to read a tax return, right? Um, I didn't know how to, you know, look at certain things in bank statements, meaning when you're getting a loan, you can't have large deposits. I would just get a bank statement and not even look at it. So there's going to be failures like in anything you start out. Um, so that that's, you know, that's, that's, that's free will and that's going to happen. And I guess in regards to that as well, so you're very big on networking. That's something you talk about a lot. You know, what's your approach when it comes to networking? Because I feel like sometimes a lot of people lack like, I guess, social confidence to put it that way. So what are some ways that when you're approaching someone, right, you're seeing them, what's your tactics? Yeah. So I love this question because a lot of people think networking is going out and, you know, going to like a networking event or something like that, right? You can network anywhere that you're at. Um, I mean, I, I go out to eat and, you know, I, I'll, I'll scan the room and I'll, I'll start talking to someone, right? Um, as far as networking, even if you're, because I, I feel like I'm an introvert and a, I, even though I'm an introvert and a lot is, you know, I have a lot of traits as an extrovert, um, I feel like networking is really just, you know, getting around people um, that have similar, I would say similar traits to you. It doesn't even have to be the same industry. Um, and seeing how they can impact whether your personal and business life. So when I started out, um, you know, the mortgage industry, you cannot survive without networking and having, you know, relationships, right? Because we are in a hundred percent referral based business, right? So when I started out and I'm pretty young compared to everyone in the mortgage industry. So I started out and I, you know, like everyone probably did does when they try to go network is search up networking events. So I would go out. And I would, you know, go shake hands and I would try to follow up with these people. And a lot of, you know, a lot of people didn't really get back to me. You know, I joined more smaller groups, try to start my own group, a lot of, a lot of different types of networking. Um, and then I, I try to, you know, I really honed in on how can I make myself more marketable to where people want to meet me and people want to do business with me. Right. So I kind of stepped up my social media game. Um, I told my story a lot. Um, I let people know how I, you know, pretty much my day to day, um, you know, I'm big on, you know, working hard as humanly possible um, in your young ages um, and be able to create a life you want. Um, that's kind of what I documented. Um, and, you know, when you do that, you'll be able to have people that want to, you know, meet you, shake your hand um, and invite you to groups and, you know, do things like that. Um and that's that's how I think someone starting out should try to network. You have to make yourself marketable. You can't just show up. No one knows you. Um, what you have to offer, it's going to be very hard to be able to network and build relationships like that. How do you approach people in a way that comes off as authentic and not like you have this agenda based uh, thing? You know, because I think that a lot of times, and this is something that I'm I'm very uh, vocal about, is I don't I don't like the idea of approaching people. Um, just to get a quick buck out of them or try to like, you know, take advantage of their resources. So for you in your life, like, what does that look like when you're approaching people uh, to be authentic, to be real, not, you know, uh, a scumbag to say the least? Yeah. So, I mean, as a, as a lender, you know, as a mortgage loan officer, you're, you're directly working with realtors, right? That's my prime, you know, one of my biggest business partners besides a, you know, you know, a certified personal accountant. Um, I would say divorce attorney, you know, a realtor is your prime source of business. So me approaching a realtor, um, yeah, in a sense, you know, yeah, you can say I'm, I'm going after, you know, their business, I'm going after a buck, but in a sense, you have to add some sort of value, right? When a realtor works with me, they know they're getting a streamlined process, you know, their clients are being taken care of, you know, I'm going to update them. 
you know, every step of the way. So in someone that's looking to network with someone and not come off, you know, kind of, you know, standoffish in the sense that they're just looking for, you know, a quick buck or they're looking for a referral, I would say add value outside of just the direct, you know, transaction, meaning what can you help them out of, you know, sides of their business that where they're lacking. I would say. Man, that's awesome. And, you know, in regards to just mortgage in general, is this something you see yourself doing long term? You know, do you do you truly have that passion continually, you know, day in, day out? Yeah. So, I mean, I love the mortgage industry. Um, I'm passionate about it because it correlates, you know, a lot with my life. Um, and it's, it's kind of second nature. Now, as far as, you know, the outlook, um, like I said, real estate is very big. Um, so, my goal in the next couple of years is is to buy you know properties that are going to pay for my lifestyle. Um, in a sense, I do want to also keep building on my team. Meaning, whether that's with the company I'm at now, or whether another company, um, you know, get more younger loan officers around me, teach them the ropes, teach them how to you know go from zero to a hundred. I talk about that a lot because um, I feel like I did that very quickly, um, and it took a lot of hard work. But it's you know they like to say it's it's simple but not easy, right? So I, I want to teach people how to do that and realize that, you know, it, it's not really hard to, you know, whatever career you're in, because business, every business has, you know, simple structures, right? Um, you know, for example, every sales job, you have simple things, right? It's it's marketing to your audience and closing, right? So for me, you know, the outlook to where I want to be at is, you know, for example, mortgages is really my foundation. Um, that's my number one source of income. I want to build off of this, create new avenues. And in a sense, you know, be done with all this, you know, have a foundation as far as people under me, um, be able to, you know, live a well with life, you know, based off of, you know, the rental properties I have, the investments I've made and other, you know, joint ventures that I come across. What's your long-term vision as well in regards to the the real estate market? You know, where do you see that headed? The real estate and the mortgage market specifically, because, you know, there's a lot of talks about people talking about, how it's either going to crash or it's going to slow down. And there are other people who are optimistic and they're, they have a bullish look, outlook onto it. Where do you stand on that? Yeah, so I think every market's different. And I'm going to speak primarily for the South Florida, even Florida market. Um, so when the market crashed in 2008 and even pre-2008, people were getting mortgages that shouldn't get a mortgage. Um, and I don't want to knock any occupation, but you, if you were at McDonald's flipping burgers, you can get a $500,000 loan, right? There was things called stated income to where you wouldn't even look at income documentation. You wouldn't pull a credit report, anything like that. And you can, you know, get a house. That's why there's so many investors now that own all these properties because you were getting properties. You didn't have to put down payments. You didn't have to submit any documentation. You, you just got the loan, right? Now, in a sense, fast forward to post-2008, Getting a mortgage, which is primarily what everyone does to get financing, unless they're paying cash and you're the small percentage that can buy a house with cash or invest with property with cash, you're getting a mortgage, right? So nowadays to get a mortgage, there's there's a lot of things that go into it, right? It's kind of like pulling out teeth. You got to submit proper documentation. You have to have your credit score at a certain level. You got to put certain down payments. Um, so it's more secure, right? Now, our foreclosures, which was a you know huge meltdown of where the crash happened, is at an all time low, right? Now, what a lot of people you know kind of get skewed as they see you go on Zillow right now, you may see you know minor you know price drops, right? You may see ten thousand, five thousand, twenty thousand, and why that's happening right now is because interest rates essentially doubled, right? Or tripled, honestly. Rates were in the twos, threes, and they went to the six, mid sixes, and at sevens at one point, right? So if you had a house that you were selling um, that, let's just say, was $400,000, um, and you had 10 people that were approved for that house at a 2 to 3% interest rate, and now rates are in the six and sevens, not as many people are approved for that house, right? So in a sense, as a seller, in order for you to sell that house, you have to drop your price at a certain standpoint. So that's why if you, you know, you hear a lot of people saying, yeah, you know, there's price reductions, the market's, you know, tanking, stuff like that. There's a reasoning to that, right? And let's be honest, you know, home prices going up 20% year after year is not healthy, right? So, you know, as far as, you know, home values, you know, going up 20% in next year, 
that's not what's happened, right? It's going to go standard five to eight percent. Some markets might touch ten. Um, hopefully, honestly, in South Florida, we might still see that, um, but I don't foresee the market crashing at all. At least here in South Florida. <laughs> You know, you talk a lot about investing as well into properties, into real estate and such. Are you big on investing in the stock market at all by any chance? Yeah, so I'm, I'm well diverse. Well, I, I'm big on being diverse, right? So, you know, I have property, right? I just bought a property here in West Virginia that we're, we're going to flip and then turn into student housing. Um, and then also, you know, the stock market is a... I use a stock market to have extra liquidity, meaning you have your savings accounts, you have stocks, uh, you know, you have different IRAs, you have a 401k, things like that. Um, but the stock market is a way to leverage inflation, right? So right now, I think is a very, you know, is a great opportunity to invest in the stock market, right? We're at, you know, almost all time lows, even though we're starting to rebound a little bit. If you put, you know, and I don't invest in these crazy, you know, stocks like these, you know, they call it uh, meme stocks. I'm, you know, mostly blue chip. Um, you know, I, I invest in some EV because I do think EV has a huge marketplace here in the future. Um, some states are already requiring that, you know, they're going to transition over to electronic, you know, vehicles. Um, but blue chip stocks that companies that are well backed that have, you know, good reserves that are not going to just walk up and go out of business. Um, I definitely recommend, you know, investing in those you know type of stocks and it's a great way to hedge inflation. That's awesome. All right, man. Well, we're going to, we're going to ask you a couple rapid fire questions. Let me know when you're ready. Yeah, I'm always ready. All right. Who's your favorite NFL team? The Giants, New York Giants, baby. If you didn't do mortgages, what other career could you see yourself in? Um, honestly, I would be in something with sales or, I would say I, my dream career at a time was to be a professional athlete. So that's probably what it would be. Not assuming your political f affiliation, Trump or DeSantis? Oof, that's a hard one. Um, I would say r right now, I would say DeSantis right now. Your favorite food in the world? Um. Honestly, I don't have one, but I would say, you know, any type of pasta, and I'm talking good pasta, um, you know, Italian, you know, maybe some Tex-Mix, Tex-Mex, I should say, um, but I'm a big pasta guy. That's awesome. Courtney, well, thanks for coming on the podcast. Is there anything you want to plug out there? If anyone has any questions or they're even interested in getting a mortgage through you, could you, could you share that? Yeah, um, I'll give you guys my personal number, 954-328-4089. Feel free to give me a call. Any questions, I would love to help anyone. Not only just doing mortgages, anyone that, you know, wants to improve their personal life, any, you know, any strides of where they're at right now. Um, also, you can follow me on social media, um, Courtney Douglas, Florida, FL for short. Um, and like I said, feel free to reach out if you guys need anything. Thank you, Courtney. Have an awesome rest of the day. Awesome, man. You have a good one. Take care.